we go. Uh, Four o'clock, so yes, welcome uh, everybody. Thank you all for joining this webinar about a disruptive multi-material additive manufacturing technology um, developed by IOTEC. This may sound complicated and you may not immediately understand what it means, but we will clear that up during this webinar. At least I hope we will. As you will see, it is a quite impressive technology actually. I am Clemens Valens from Elector, and today with me are three guest presenters from IOTech Hervé Javis, Stéphane Etienne, and Ralph Birnbaum. Together, they will present IOTech and the multimaterial laser printing technology developed by their company. Well, hello, Hervé, Ralph, and Stéphane. How are you doing? Very well. Hey, from Sunny as well. Pretty good from uh, here in France. France. So we are in three countries there. So <laughs> IOTEC from Israel and UK and also from France uh, is the winner of the 2021 Productronica Fast Forward Startup Competition uh, powered by Elector. Um, they will present uh, the company and what they do. At the end of this webinar, you can ask questions. And now I have to do this the right way. You can type them in the yeah, I see them in the right bottom corner. There will be a chat box. There you can type questions and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. Uh, please also note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available afterwards on the Elector TV channel for replay. And that's it for me. I will now hand over to, um, well, Ralph, Hervé, Oostevan, who all three of them uh, from uh, IOTech. Okay, thank you very much, Clemens, for the lovely introduction. So, as he mentioned, my name is Ralph Birenbaum, Director of Business Development at IOTEC, the inventor of the continuous laser-assisted deposition technology. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you about innovative contactless technology for high-resolution, high-speed solar paste. And I shall be breaking down each of those individual parts in the coming presentation. But first, before I do that, I'd like to show you a short video to give you a taste of what's to come. Every day, innovative electronic designs enable new product functionalities. Cars are becoming autonomous. Cell phones keep on becoming lighter, thinner, and more powerful. But traditional production tools are now reaching their limits. Cutting edge electronics call for cutting edge manufacturing technologies. Introducing IOTEC's LAD a breakthrough additive manufacturing technology for electronics, from semiconductor to PCB. LAD prints all materials in three integrated steps, coating, jetting, and post-processing. First, coating on a foil in a perfectly smooth and fine microlayer. Second, laser jetting, fast with micron accuracy. Third, post-processing, laser sintering, UV curing, or heating. Conductive and laminate layers are coated, jetted, and sintered or cured. Vias are filled. LAD jets standard industrial materials with 3,000 times higher viscosity than inkjet without any risk of clogging. Another great benefit, standard commercial solder mask is deposited in the same system, ensuring perfect alignment and precise board coating. Printing a layer takes seconds. Multilayer PCBs are printed in minutes. This is truly PCB manufacturing at the speed of laser. For assembly, a camera locates the pads. Standard industrial solder paste is dispensed on the foil and jetted on the PCB with high accuracy in a perfectly repeatable manner. With the same technology, RFID antennas are printed and centered. Isolating bridges are deposited allowing for multiple conductive layers. IOTEX LAD can dispense up to six materials on any substrate, rigid or flexible, rough or smooth. The system's speed, accuracy and flexibility enables advanced designs for more compact and powerful applications. LAD prints both conductive and organic materials simultaneously 
at high throughput and up to 20 micron resolution, offering the flexibility of dispensing at the speed of screen printing. So, introducing an innovative contactless technology for the position of high resolution solder paste at high speed. Now, although this um, technology can be applied for many different applications, in this webinar we're going to be focusing specifically on solder paste deposition. To be clear, this is solder paste material, it, materials that have been industry certified, not reformulated materials. Um, this is also the case for other applications and other materials where we, be, we, we use the standard materials up to extremely high viscosities. So traditionally, non-digital technologies have been used, such as screen printing, where before you do the printing, you need to design and print and prepare the mask or the stencil. Um, when, when using it, it needs to be cleaned um, repeatedly, and then it needs to be stored somewhere, taking up uh, resources in, in, in terms of uh, real estate. The, that mesh will then impose a constraint in terms of layer thickness and resolution. Then uh, digital technologies came along, such as jetting and dispensing through some kind of nozzle. That nozzle imposed a constraint on material viscosity. It will slow things down vis-a-vis -vis the stencil printing. And also, there are the nozzle size will also define the kind of resolution that you can go down to. So here we introduce continuous laser-assisted deposition, which is a contactless deposition technology. We have neither nozzle nor mesh, giving us full flexibility, allowing us to go up to extremely high viscosities. We can control the layer thickness, and we do so at high speed, going down to very high resolutions. In a way, we call this a, a type of digital screen printer, where we have the productivity of the screen printers, but the full flexibility and accuracy of the jet and dis jet printers and dispensers. So how does it work? On the left, you can see the mechanism. So um, most materials that are flowable can be printed up to extremely high viscosities. Um, on the left, you can see the material is in a dispenser and is dispensed on a thin transparent foil, which then goes through two cylindrical rolls to guarantee a uniform thickness of the material. The carrier tape then takes the material underneath the laser, which gives it a brief, powerful punch, creating a little vapor bubble, which pushes a drop of the material onto the substrate below. If you can just uh, play the video, please. So as you can see, the material is deposited or dispensed onto the carrier, which goes through the cylindrical rolls and underneath the laser, pushing a drop of the material onto the substrate below. I'm going to play that again. As the material is on the carrier tape, through the cylindrical rolls, under the laser, and a drop goes down onto the substrate below. Um, how do I go back to where we were? Okay. Okay, so um, all post-processing happens inside the machine. We have multiple curing types, both UV and thermal curing happens in the station. The same laser that is used for the CNAD technology can also be used to sinter conducting materials and also to ablate away any kind of ex excess, excess material. We have high resolution, but also that resolution is dynamic. On the same design, we can print here 150 micron lines going all the way down to 30 micron lines. We've tested a number of different conductors. In this case, copper, we can also print, we've also printed silver pastes. Um, to be clear, these are not our materials. 
These are materials by other vendors that we have printed with a high uh, positioning accuracy. To give you an idea of the, the productivity involved here, we call it productivity of screen printing. Uh, lines can be printed up to one meter per second. Drops can be printed seven million per hour. So if I could just get the movie here to give you an idea of how it is. So this is in real time. You see the operator is placing the substrate in the machine. The printhead goes in position. The material is deposited there and one, two, three scans, four scans of the laser and out comes a layer of a PCB. And I'll show that to you again. Of course, this is um, this will all be automated and put and made in line uh, very soon. The printhead goes in place, material is dispensed, and the laser starts doing its stuff. <laughs> and very quickly, you have an entire circuitry printed. Okay. So here at IOTech, <clears throat> excuse me, we um, claim to be able to print almost any flowable material up to extremely high viscosities, probably 500,000 centipoles or 500 pascal seconds. To give some of you an idea of what that means, so peanut butter is about 250,000 centipoles. We can do twice the viscosity of that. Here is a short list of many different types of materials that we have already printed. Uh, both organic materials as well as conductive materials, um, ceramics, even silicon, uh, with a viscosity of 300,000 centipoles, with multiple curing types, of course. That viscosity, as well as the filler size of the material, will define the resolution that we can go down to. So we, we've done multiple different resolutions, here down to 25 micron. Uh, we can probably go down even further than that. We are continuously being challenged with new materials uh, by our customers as well as by our investors. One of our investors is a material supplier. I'll talk about him a little bit later. And they are continuously challenging us with new materials that they cannot print otherwise. Not only do we print lots of different materials, we print some of them at the same time. We have multi-material capabilities. And here are some applications where that is relevant. For example, we can print the copper traces and the solder mask in the same machine. It's the only solution that I'm aware of that can do both. We can print multiple adhesives or multiple colored adhesives. And here on the right, you have an application with two different materials. So a component has been solder pasted and a glue dot has been placed in the center so um, of, the, of the LED, and that will guarantee perfect alignment between the LEDs. So both a uh, solder paste and uh, an adhesive is being printed at the same time on the same machine. So to give you an idea why we call this a digital screen printer, and here you can see why in, in yellow we've highlighted the, the throughputs. If the digital technologies um, will go up as high as 100,000 dots per hour, we're talking about a couple of orders of magnitude greater than that. So we, we, we print 5 million dots per hour. We also go print higher than that, but for the spec, we'll commit to a more conservative 5 million. Uh, line speeds of a meter per second, but we have all the digital, um, we have all the flexibility and accuracy of the other digital solutions, as well as the ability to print multiple materials at the same time, to include post-processing, we can print at different Z heights, so we can print the dispense in a cavity. And we also have the ability to do what is called 3D printing, so multiple layers um, at the same time. And all of this at very high resolution with a good accuracy too. So 
So all along the, supply, the electronic supply chain, there's many different applications where one material is somehow being placed upon another through plating, dispensing, etching, or whatever. There's many different uh, mechanisms to do that. But uh, uh, we, uh, and we have done a lot of progress on some of those applications. Uh, here are three, solder paste, dye attach, and underfill. We're also working on a number of other applications. But in this webinar, we're going to be uh, focusing on solder paste. So solder paste, we have succeeded in printing solder balls down to 60 micron of both large and small components. We can even print on our components or, and, and creating multiple multi-chip multi, multi -chip applications. And of course, we do that at industrial speeds, above 5 million drops per hour. Here are some pictures and some examples and uh, close-ups as well. How we do the large and small components of many different sizes. We can do rectangles, squares, house shapes, ovals if necessary. And we do that with a raster image of multiple drops of the material, um, which overlap to create a single solar paste ball, which is conductive, of course, too. The system includes solar paste inspection, or at least a low volume form of SPI, up to about 20,000 measurements per second. It also includes 2D AOI inside the machine. We have a uh, variation in resolutions. At a constant pitch, we can uh, decrease diameters. This here, in this example, going down from 172 micron down to 110 micron for type six. I believe uh, current um, diameters for type 6 are around 300 or 250 micron. I may be a little bit off there, but this is certainly uh, a better resolution than current technologies allow. And this is, of course, uh, to show you the uniform thickness of the solder balls with a consistent height to width ratio. Here's the distribution we should get here somewhere. I know. So on that, on the topic of uh, ratios, so here we've done an example of a, um, of a solder ball that's 190 micron diameter, or 88 micron average, uh, sorry, 96 uh, micron average radius, and got an 88 micron average height. That gives us a ratio of 46%. When printing um, multiple layers, we can go up to 111 micron height for 120 micron diameter ball, which gives us a ratio of an unprecedented 90%. It's pretty uh, impressive rate, uh, height, to, height to diameter ratio. Resolutions have we printed with a type 8 uh, solar paste, in this case from Heraeus. We printed a um, down to 60 micron uh, solder balls. To be clear, these are the standard solder paste that they send us. We don't do any kind of formulation of the material. When testing multiple layers, um, <clears throat> in this case, for, uh, we, we're printing on glass just for the test, and we took a Henkel today called Harima GC50 50 Type 5. You get the uniform thickness. Um, there, you get the uniform thickness, and here is the, the distribution. So the average uh, diameter here is 290 micron, 145 micron ra radius. Uh, we have a thickness of 30, 34 to 35 micron height, all within roughly 10%. Then when we want to print an additional layer, we can do so, still getting a uniform thickness. And this time, we've increased the diameter to 310 micron, and uh, the height we have increased to 50 micron. And now the ratio has actually increased to 16%. But of course, we don't want to print on glass. We print on copper pads. And this is the same printing of that material on the G Type 5 GC50 <clears throat> on copper pads. 
and here's a close up and uniform thickness and a distribution all within about two these are these are solder balls of a diameter of 220 or a type 5 solder paste average thickness here is 55 micron or within about 10 mostly within 10 percent so to recap um in addition to prototyping this is a production machine for commercial ready objects for printing of commercial ready uh, products um, we can print a very wide variety of materials including materials that until now could not be printed such as silicon we have the ability to control the volume of each individual drop so giving us full flexibility in terms of customization and design the ability to print multiple materials at the same time increases innovation, of course. And the fact that there is no mesh uh, or no nozzle involved, it allows for a much more simple maintenance. And there's also no expensive consumables um, involved. All of this together leads to a, a lower cost of ownership. We do all of this, of course, at industrial speeds and the integration of multiple steps such as the curing and post-processing in the same machine makes for a more simple production process a little bit about the company so iotech has been around for roughly uh, six years we finally launched our first machine at productronica at the end of 2021 where elector awarded us the fast forward award um productronica themselves also gave us the innovation award for 2021 and more recently we won the um, LOPEC award for most impactful technology as mentioned we are backed by industrial players so the first one is Henkel the global um, materials vendor uh, who I said are continuously challenging us with new materials especially adhesive of course and uh, ASMPT the um, electronics equipment vendor they too have, um, yeah, have invested and all, they are also a customer. We are involved with uh, quite a large number of different companies on a, a variety of projects. So um, to, to, just to give a quick summary of uh, what we do, uh, we believe that the CLAD technology will give you the productivity of screen printers, but with the accuracy and the flexibi flexibility of the digital solutions such as jetters and dispensers. Thank you. And uh, we are open to questions. Oh, my microphone. Thank you, Ralph. That was very interesting indeed. Uh, now, type questions in the, in the QA box if one wants to activate the Q&A uh, session, because I only see the chat box. Yeah. You can now type your questions in the Q&R or Q&A uh, box. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, already. Uh, after seeing the video, which looks like a very nice uh, machine, uh, the, the real machine is like that, or is it just an animation? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Okay, in the, the beginning, you we watch the video of the machine the demo. Ah, okay. So the video is actually a mixture because originally we created a video with animation, and then when we when we uh, built the machine, we added in bits. So there's uh, it's toggling back and forth inside that. So uh, it's a, there is actually a real machine. In fact, we have already installed the machine at a customer, um, and we are about to ship our second machine out um, any day now as well. Uh, that has been. Uh, Purchased by a customer. Okay. Okay, there are some questions here. Let's uh, go to the first question. So, what happens with the leftover substrate and paste? Okay, I'm not sure what is meant by the leftover substrate, but as far as the, the paste uh, is concerned, uh, it's a very good question. So, once uh, a printing has been done, the carrier can carry that sort of paste around again to be recovered. Uh, we or more solar paste can be deposited um, in order to cover all the gaps and it can be reused. We can do that 
a number of a small number of times, between three and five times, um, uh, and we are of course aiming to reduce the waste as much as possible. Okay. Another question. Nice technology, but how can a private person take benefit of it? Is there a service provider for PCB design? Yeah, so we are just uh, starting out. Uh, currently, there are no service providers yet. I hope that one day there will be customers who will be want to, who will want to provide this as a, as a service, uh, but we're not quite there yet. Having said that, this is actually an ideal solution for service providers when they do come along. Just uh, to have an idea, what does a machine cost? Um, there, there is a uh, that's going to be dependent on the application as well on as the features of the machine so it's not really something i can say now it depends another question what is the maximum dimension of a pcb okay so currently the machine is built for a substrate up to 300 on 300 millimeters or 30 by 30 centimeters um, that may change later on. There is certainly enough place in the machine, but the platform at the moment is 30 on 30. I think uh, PCB pooling services use uh, substrates of uh, one meter by one meter, right? Uh, not one by one, probably uh, for 450 on 600, something like that, a bit smaller, uh, which we cannot do yet either. Um, but these are things that we need to implement in the future. There is certainly no, there is certainly no uh, constraint in the technology for this. Matter of price and cost, etc. Another question: Can the unused space be recycled automatically? Do you just uh, answer that? Yes. How much does the deposition cost compared with traditional methods? Um, oh, maybe, maybe I can take that one over. Um, so, um, deposition cost is application related. Uh, we have done some uh, comparison of costs for uh, typical high volume uh, applications, such as uh, mainly uh, back end semiconductor uh, integration. So, um, if that case question could be precising exactly wh where is the field of operation, then we can answer. Um, Otherwise, from a general approach, um, it is uh, it is faster than any uh, dispensing uh, available today on the market, um, and uh, most of the time it's matching the productivity of multi equipment. Uh, so we we really need to go deep into the uh, calculation and uh, dichotomy of the application to do a, a true uh, cost comparison. But we are more aiming at capabilities than at cost, to be honest. Another question about capabilities, thermal support. Uh, I'll take that one also. Uh, thermal support, so usually that's uh, encapsulation or and the field type of application. So we, uh, we are releasing a hot chuck uh, capability uh, this month. Uh, question about surfaces. What are the surface materials that we can print? Glass is not acceptable. Well, we can print on any kind of substrate, any flat substrate. Uh, we can even include a certain amount of topology. So glass is an acceptable surface. Well, actually, you showed in the glass presentation. Is acceptable. Yes, uh, the, uh, as long as there's no adhesion issues, we, we can print it. Yes. So the, the substrate is just an acceptor. It's not really part of the process so much. Another question here. Can you apply copper film over metallic substrate with a thickness of five microns? It's a very precise question. Uh, I the, uh, then, uh, in, in theory, yes. Okay, but in reality, in theory, not yet. Uh, I would say... Um, might be material dependent, but five micron is a typical uh, thickness that we can reach. We can we can be even lower if needed. We can be much higher if required. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm doing a copper presentation uh, tomorrow uh, at uh, Minatech in Grenoble. If somebody wants to get into a, a fine copper deposition. Okay. 
in Grenoble, in France. Yes. Okay, well, Mathieu, you just have to go there and then you can see it all. Uh, here we have another question. Yeah. Is it possible to print a full PCB board with multi layers? The short answer is currently not yet. Uh, this is something we're developing for the future, as you saw in the movie. Uh, conceptually, it is possible. Uh, we haven't yet quite fully defined the process of doing it yet. But it's definitely an objective of the, of the company. It is an objective, yes. Uh, today, today, we have proven the capability to apply non-conductive material on top of conductive material and to reapply conductive material on top of the uh, previously applied uh, non-conductive material. So uh, even though we have not gone all the way to, uh, to fully do a 100% uh, PCB, uh, we, we can manage uh, all the steps of this uh, type of process. If you would print multiple layers, do, would you have to fill up the space uh, on a layer so that all the layers are flat after one uh, printing step? Uh, of, of course, you need, you need to fill up the uh, empty space to get to an even flat uh, level each time. Okay. Another question. What is the maximum distance that the material can travel? I do not understand this question, but... Well, I, I assume that they mean in the Z direction, so there is no maximum, but of course, the further away you are, the, it will affect the resolution. So if you want very tight resolutions, you need to go very close, um, tens of microns. Uh, we can print high, uh, half a millimeter, a millimeter, even further away, but then that comes at the expense of the resolution. So will we soon be able to use this technology in the lab? Um, it can be used in, uh, in the labs today, if you buy a machine. <laughs> okay, well, um, what is the advantage comparing with traditional technology for sm very small size PCBs with high density traces? <sighs> wow, well, there are many advantages. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Um, first of all, there's no wet process involved, so there's no uh, chemicals or anything. This is a, a printing process. There's no plating or anything like that involved. Um, we can, uh, if you're doing not not uh, mass production of millions of PCBs, but you're just doing a high mix, um, small volume type of shop, then this is a very good solution. It allows you to create very small batches, customize each individual panel if you like, get very, very fast turnaround. Uh, you don't need to move it around. You don't need to move the panel around to the, to the drilling room because there is no drilling. The vias are built up together with the PCB. Um, many, many, many different advantages here. Uh, one, one of them, you can, you can get a functional PCB uh, from, a, uh, from a raw design uh, next day. Uh, I mean, yeah. once, once you once you finish your raw design, um, at, at the end of the next day, you have you have a functional PCB that you can put into a standard reflow oven. Okay. What are the applications for machines number one and two in the field? <laughs> okay, Jean. So um, as you know, the first machine went to ASMPT, so they'll be doing solder paste. Okay, next question. It's a long question. How does the current carrying capability compare to equivalent wire thickness? Uh, for instance, if uh, 0.25 millimeter wire and equivalent position, can they carry the exact same currents? Um, so the conductivity of um, the, the conductive paste will, of course, depend on the material used. Uh, we are not the material suppliers, so you'd have to go to the material supplier for that. We have reached um, conductivities of roughly one third of bulk copper. So the, the coppers that we used, um, when you print them, there is a price to pay. It's not the same thing as bulk. There is a reduced uh, conductivity, uh, but usually that can be made up for where in the design. Um, ju just as a complementary information, uh, so um, 25 uh, 
Uh, those type of wires, I would expect them to be uh, copper uh, for a power device. Uh, we, ca we can build up structure uh, into the same dimension type. Uh, and uh, those can be either fully flat or they can be lying on a 3D shape. Okay. Question about the laser. What is the frequency of the laser being used? That's not information that we share. Oh, get, okay. get, get an NDA involved and we answer to that one. <laughs> is it important to know? As a user? I mean, no. Probably not. Unless you want to do a copycat. Yeah. <laughs> what about the main maintenance? How often? Um, well, to be honest, uh, we're in the better phase at the moment. So we, uh, we're still looking at these uh, the numbers. So the, uh, as I mentioned, the first machine has, been, has gone out. It's been there a few months already. Uh, the second machine is going out now. So everything in terms of maintenance, I can't give you data, but of course we are aiming for industry accepted practice. As little as possible. Always. There will be service contracts so um, we'll be responsible for maintenance, and of course, we'll want to do that as, as make sure that we don't need to uh, send out engineers all the time. But if you if you look usually at the, at the dispenser, most of the maintenance from a dispenser process is coming from the valve itself. We have no valve, uh, so that that portion of the uh, maintenance which is representing most of the time more than half of the equipment maintenance is gone away. So per, per nature, uh, equipment will be much less demanding in maintenance than a dispenser. And also we, we have shown that many applications where we are replacing 15, 20 dispensers, uh, so you will have much less equipment to keep up running. Okay. Another long question. Will we soon be able to use the solar dispensing technology in the lab? Okay, we already uh, had this question. Like mounting decoupling capacitors on RF board tracks uh, smaller than 100 micrometers. I mean, without using a big machine, but a downsized one that can just be placed on a small table in the lab. Well, you need a big table. <laughs> okay, on a big table then. Yeah, on a big table. Uh, machine machine size because of the process uh, is will we, we, we'll not get below a square meter for sure. Okay, it will not be some small laser printer you put in a corner. It's not. It's not in the roadmap. No, I can understand. Uh, here's another. Currently, last question. Is it possible for the technology to print non-contact at distances of 10 centimeters? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's a bit much. That's not exactly something that we're aiming for. And why would you do it? It's like a, a gun shooting almost. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, that was the last question, actually, that I see in the Q&R. If there are no more other questions, then we can uh, move on to the end of the webinar. Uh, if you want more information about IOTech, then you can go to the website. I will paste uh, the link to the website in the chat box. I'm doing that right now. I'm trying to do that. Here we go. Oh, that's on um, IOTech.com. Io yes, so www.i-o-tech.com. Yes. Okay, well, that's it then uh, for now. And as I said at the beginning, this webinar will be available afterwards uh, on the Electi Elector TV channel, where you can watch it uh, as many times as you like. The next webinar, the Elector webinar, will be about test and measurement and is scheduled for August the 11th, which is in about uh, six weeks, if I didn't uh, make a mistake in counting. So I hope to see you there again. Uh, thank you, Ralph Birnbaum and Stefan Etienne, for doing this webinar. It and an thank honor. you all for uh, attending. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.